Hello and welcome. You're now looking at Amazon Author Central and it is found at author.amazon.com and it's typically the starting point for your marketing efforts for your published work. On your profile page, you're allowed to place your bio, you're allowed to set an author page URL, you're allowed to keep your blog feed inside of Author Central, photos and videos that are relevant to your work, and any other pertinent information. It's a place where all of your books will be listed, specifically if they're going to be marketed on the Amazon website. And this will help you to incorporate your published book into your marketing. But there are more processes that you can set up outside of your Amazon Author Central account. And we will look at these factors in the rest of this course, specifically those factors that will allow you to incorporate your published work into your marketing efforts for your existing products and services. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. One of the first things you'll want to do is to secure a domain name around your personal name or your personal brand. If possible, you are going to want to secure the .com for your name or your brand. You'll typically find that a first name along with a last name will be higher in price than a regular name. What you can do in that case is if there is a fit, you can add in a middle name and then research for the domain name. In many cases, if you add in a third name or a middle name, you will be able to secure a .com for your personal brand. If the full name is too long or makes your domain name too long, you can add in a middle initial and you can typically then find a domain name. Once you've done that, if you haven't done so already, you want to secure all of the social media accounts around your branded name. You can also begin to create specific groups and pages even if you presently do not expect to have to operate from that specific social media account. This also includes accounts that you may have on video sharing site YouTube. Once you've secured all of your sites, one thing you'll want to do is you'll want to go to your favorite search engine, write in your name or brand name so you can determine what the search engine show and where you might want to place content in your social media accounts. You should be monitoring your search results on a regular basis to determine what customers may see when they go looking to find out more about you once they have experienced your published work. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. One of the things that you'll want to do as an author is to make sure that you are collecting names and email addresses. If you have an existing email sending service that you're using for your business, you can also use it for your authorship practice. So by going to your favorite search engine, you can use the search term email sending service and you will see several services available. For the sake of this video, we are going to look at the email sending service MailChimp. Email sending services will allow you to collect the names and email addresses of individuals that are purchasing your products as well as your authored books. If you don't want to maintain an entire website with traditional hosting, most email sending services will give you a website that you have use of. You can use this service and connect your existing domain name to the service so that the domain name covers the entire website given to you by the sending service or you can place it inside of a subdomain. In order to create attractive pages for your customer to sign up for your email sending service, most services will give you the ability to create a landing page that is template based. You can connect it to a specific list. You can select a template and you can then edit and design the template as your landing page for your business. So what you'll want to do first is to set up an email sending service to capture names and email addresses from individuals that are making purchases. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Once you have selected an email sending service, you will want to create a specific list or, in the case of MailChimp, audience in order to collect the names associated with your book practice. Now, for the sake of this video, we have already created an audience inside of MailChimp. What you will do is you will go to the area where you can create a specific list and you will create the separate list for your book customers. Now inside of MailChimp, 
you'll be asked for a specific audience name. You'll be asked for a specific default from email address. That means that when you use the service in order to send emails, you want to have an email that the individuals will see as the sender. You'll also want to have a specific sending name. One of the things you'll want to consider is whether or not you're going to want to have your customers to double opt in. That means that they'll need to confirm before they're actually added to your email sending service list before you can send emails by the service. And depending on where you do business in the world, you may want to enable GDPR fields. You'll want to determine that based on the laws in your country and where you do business. Now, every email sending service is going to be different in terms of what they notify you for. You can determine what that's going to be by checking these individual boxes, depending on how you want to be notified. Once you have created your list, you'll then be ready to begin using it in order to collect names and email addresses in the different ways in which you do business. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, when you have customers or readers of your book, you want to be able to send them to a specific place where they can sign up for your email marketing list. Typically, the email sending service that you're working with gives you access to a tool to create a landing page. Now, in MailChimp, you would go to this creation area. You're then going to go to this link that says build a landing page. Now, in MailChimp, you would have to specify the list that you're going to be sending people to. You're then going to give your landing page a name that will be internal that you will be able to see as you edit and update the page. We're going to click begin. And as demonstrated before, we're going to select a specific landing page template that we're going to edit. Now, not all email sending services are going to be the same when it comes to their landing page builder. Typically, the services want this process to be easy for you, so you can drag and drop elements into the actual page. For example, if you wanted to place a video on this landing page, you would drag this element into the area. You would then click on top of the element. What you'll then see on the right side are the editing elements. So what you can do here in order to make sure that there's going to be a video on your landing page is you would place a video URL here. You can then caption the video here in this area. So basically you're going to be able to customize the page where you're going to be sending people to in order to collect their names and email addresses. In the case of MailChimp, each of these areas is something that you can design. And when you click on the elements, you're going to see the design elements in a right side menu, and you can make changes here. Now in MailChimp, we can complete this process. We can save it and close it. Now you'll notice here that you're given a specific URL. You can make changes to that URL, but basically if you don't have a domain name that you're setting up with the email sending service, you'll use the domain that they are giving you in order to send to your customers. Now MailChimp is a good example of the fact that if you want to add in your own domain as a custom domain, you would have to upgrade your plan. Now we're not going to do that for the sake of this video, but this is a case where you're going to want to make sure that you understand the payment plan and what you'll need for the services that you're going to want for your email sending service. Okay, so with that, thanks. And I will see you in another video. Welcome back. And it's possible you may already have a website. You're now looking at a WordPress website. Email sending services give you an option of being able to place a form on your existing website so that website visitors will be able to see a place where they can sign up for your email marketing list. In the case of WordPress, you'll typically place this form on a sidebar where you can control what is called a widget. And you'll see here in the widget that there is a set of code that says begin MailChimp signup form. And as a sample, you're going to see that signup form here in this area. And so basically on every page of our site, we're going to have an area that we created in MailChimp to collect names and email addresses. But to place that form from our MailChimp account, we'll need to get the signup code. We'll need to get the signup code. Now in MailChimp, there's a section for signup forms. And you can see here that there's a section for what are called embedded forms. This is where we can generate HTML code to embed in our site or our blog to collect signups. 
And so basically it's here where we can customize our form. Once we complete it, we can then click continue. We're then going to see code that our email sending service gives us. We're going to copy that code and we're going to go to the widget area. We're not going to replace the code. We're then going to update the site. And you'll notice now that our form is in the widget area that we just created inside of our email sending service account. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, this course is not a full-blown tutorial on MailChimp or any other email service provider, but there are a few more essential things that you'll need to know about this very important practice of collecting names and email addresses. There are basically going to be two kinds of messages that you're going to want to send the individuals that become part of your email marketing list. One is called a regular email. Now, in some platforms, this is called a broadcast email. Basically, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be designing a message that will go to everyone on our email marketing list in real time. So in the case of MailChimp, we'll first decide on who the message will go to. Once we choose the specific list, we can choose a segment within that list that we have designed beforehand or we can decide to send it to everyone on the email marketing list. In MailChimp, we can save this area. Now, in the case of MailChimp, the from depends on the email address that we have set up for this specific list. We will then write a subject. Now, this subject will be different than the name of your email, which is only internal to you. The subject will actually be seen by your customer and it will be one of the determining factors as to whether or not they will open your email. We're now going to click save. You'll notice now that the only thing that we have left to do is to actually write the email that we're going to be sending to everyone on our email marketing list. Now, every platform is going to be different at this point, but inside of MailChimp, we can choose a specific layout in order to place our text. Once you've written out the broadcast email, you can then click continue here in MailChimp and your email is now ready to be sent to your entire list or those you have specified. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, the second kind of email that you can make sure that your customers will get is called an automated email. On some platforms, this is called an autoresponder. In every process to create this autoresponder email or automatic email is going to be different within each platform. In MailChimp, we would go to this create area. We would then go to this automations tab. We would then get started. Now within MailChimp, we would create a journey. We would choose the specific list that we're going to be working with. We're going to name the customer contact journey. We would then click start building. What we would then do is to choose a starting point. In some platforms, this is called a trigger. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to have an email that we craft ahead of time sent to all the individuals on the list that meet specific criteria. The simplest element to create is when an individual signs up for our email marketing list. We're then going to save this as the starting point or the trigger. What we would then do is to add a journey point. And in this case, we're going to automatically send the individual an email. We can design specific elements about this automated email. We could decide who on our list would get it, what the subject would be, how often we would send it or on what days we would send it. We would determine any tracking. We could then select a specific template. We would then design the email, save it and return back to the journey that we are creating. And basically what we have done is we have followed the MailChimp process so that everyone that signs up to a specific list, they're going to get an automated email. Now, again, this process is going to work in a different manner in every autoresponder platform that you are using, but it is the second kind of email that you can send individuals, which will be automated based on specific criteria. Okay. So with that, thanks. And I will see you in another video. Welcome back. You are now looking at a WordPress website. And if you have a domain name, it's one of the easiest ways to create a website or have a website builder. Within your WordPress website, you can control the appearance of that website using themes. And you're typically going to have themes available to you. 
or you can choose a new theme connected to your WordPress website. What you can do is you can go within your themes and find the kind of theme that you want. WordPress gives you a feature filter. This will allow you to search among the free themes that are available with WordPress so that you can have what you want in a theme. So for example, you can choose certain elements, you can choose certain features, and you can choose certain layouts. Once you apply your filters, WordPress will show you the themes that will be available to you that you can customize for your purposes. What you can do is you can then install your theme. You can then activate your theme. What you have done is you have now created a different look for your WordPress website. If you want to see what another theme may look like, you can go to the themes that are available. You can click on Live Preview. This will show you what your theme will look like once it's on your site. You can also control the functionality of your WordPress website. You can do that with the plugins area. What you can do is to go to this add new plugins that will bring you to this area and you'll be able to see recommended WordPress plugins that will be free to you or in some cases you'll be able to initiate a trial to determine if the plugin will work for you. It's a good idea to make sure that you have backed up your WordPress website before you have installed any plugins. You'll also want to do background research on any plugin to determine if the plugin is going to be safe and if it will work with your existing plugins. Now, as an author, you may want to write on a regular basis, and typically you are going to use the blog feature inside of your WordPress website. That will mean that you will be using the posting area and you will click add new post and you will use this area to write new posts on a regular basis to add to your WordPress website. You will be able to manage all of your posts from the dashboard inside of your WordPress website. And so by installing a WordPress website, you'll be installing a home base for all of your activity that won't cost you any more than your existing hosting account. Okay. So with that, thanks. And I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. You're now looking at Skillshare.com and Skillshare is a course marketplace where you can repurpose the ideas and content from your book and to teach people that are willing to learn by video. There's no cost to uploading your courses to Skillshare and you are paid based on the number of people who select your course and watch it to the end and participate in it. There are similar platforms. One is called Udacity. Depending on the subject matter, you can upload courses to Udacity. In some cases, you can make application to become a LinkedIn learning instructor and to have your courses available on LinkedIn. You can also have your courses available on a site like Udemy. Now this is a portion of the course platforms that are available. These are marketplaces. So people are coming to these websites in order to learn specific skills. And if they select your course and participate in it, you will then be paid. Each website has its own process for creating a course on that site. Typically, once you have gone through the process, you can then upload video content to the platform. Now, in some cases, the platforms will want you to interact with students on a regular basis. And in other cases, having your course there is all the interaction that will be required. To find niche specific course marketplaces, you want to go to your favorite search engine and make sure that in your search parameters, you specify that you're looking for marketplaces to upload your courses. Make sure you specify that you're looking for marketplaces where you can upload your courses. Okay. So with that, thanks. And I will see you in another video. Welcome back. If you go to your favorite search engine and you begin to look for places where you can repurpose your content into online courses, you probably found that there are course marketplaces and there are also course platforms. A marketplace is a place where individuals go to look for specific subjects and you are paid by the business hosting that marketplace. A course platform is a location online for you to place your course content, but you will be responsible for finding customers or students for your course. And there are a number of platforms available such as Learn Worlds, Thinkific, and Teachable. And all of these platforms are available at a price. 
unlike a course marketplace, you will have to pay for access to the course platform. Now, inside of course platforms like Teachable, you will have courses available. And inside of those courses, you will be able to upload your course content. You will upload your course content into curriculum areas. And what course platforms do for you is to make it so that you don't have to know technical aspects of online constructions in order to sell your product. For example, the places where you build your sales presentation, your thank you page, and your checkout page are all templated. And you will basically edit the templates to suit your particular product and your brand. You will use the platform to set your price. And you will use the platform in order to create coupons for special value for certain customers. If you want to turn your course into a certification of some kind, typically course platforms will give you the ability to give your customers a certificate of completion. So a course platform like Teachable is one way of being able to deliver your content in the form of an online course if you choose not to have your course in the marketplace and you don't want to need to have significant technical skills. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. When you're using a course platform or even your own sales pages, you typically will have control over the first page a customer will see when they make payment. And as is the case here in the Teachable course platform, you can customize a thank you page or you can send people to a custom URL where you have control over the look and feel of what is going to be on that page. Regardless, one of the most important pages that you will have as an author and product creator will be your thank you page. Since this is where all of your customers will come once they have made a purchase, this is your opportunity to show them everything that you have available. And so it's on this page that you want to show individuals if you have other information products available or courses and that you make your other published works available by showing them on your page. And typically, you will be able to edit any page that you're going to be working with in order to place a URL to the specific published work that you want people to see. And so even if you choose not to use a course platform, you want to be in control over your thank you page, making sure that every customer gets an opportunity to see other works that you have available that they can purchase. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. One way to expand your audience is to leverage the following of other people in similar categories or that create similar content. And one way to do this is to create a virtual summit. Now, there are a number of platforms available for you to create a virtual summit or you don't even have to use a platform at all. If you want to do a series of live videos or training, and you want to host the recordings, you can host what is the equivalent of a summit. However, there are platforms available that will help you. And if you go to your favorite search engine and you look for virtual summit platform or the platform Hey Summit, you can use the platform to host your own virtual summit. Now, Hey Summit is not a free application. There is pricing associated with it. However, there is a free trial available and you can determine if Hey Summit is a platform you'll want to use in order to host your own virtual summit. The platform will allow you your own customization. You can have your own webinar hosts, payment methods, as well as affiliates to promote your summit. If you want to integrate with other platforms, you can do so with the available platforms inside of Hey Summit. Or you can move your content out of Hey Summit using a technical webhook if you understand the nature of webhooks. Hey Summit does connect to the platform Zapier. However, it's important to note that you can only export information out of Hey Summit. Currently, there is no way to use Zapier to export information into Hey Summit. Now, again, you don't have to use Hey Summit in order to create a virtual summit. The platform is available to help you to navigate some of the processes without having to hire individuals to help you to manage the summit. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. One of the things you may notice about Hey Summit is that it integrates with one shopping cart in particular, and that shopping cart is called Thrivecart. Thrivecart is a unique platform that is a shopping cart system 
that will allow you to sell your products and services and to deliver what you've sold to your customer. You can also initiate upsells and cross-sells using Thrivecart. And more importantly, Thrivecart will allow you to host and run your own affiliate network privately. Now, there is a cost associated with Thrivecart. There is a one-time charge for you to have access to the platform to use it as a shopping cart and delivery system. Now, as is the case with most shopping cart systems, Thrivecart does have integrations. For example, you can make it so that every customer that makes a purchase, they will automatically be added to an integrated autoresponder list. In particular, we can add in or integrate our MailChimp email marketing list to every purchase made on Thrivecart. Thrivecart basically involves setting up a product on the online platform. You will set the pricing for your product. You will decide whether there are going to be upsells or bump offers on your product. You can use the payment processor that you choose. And when a person makes payment, you can make it so that the individual will either get an invoice, they will be sent to a specific URL of your choosing, or you can have the individual added to a specific membership site. Now, the advantage of using Thrivecart over one of the systems that are going to be available where you don't have to pay up front is that there are no fees charged to any sale that you make on the Thrivecart system. Now, the other advantage is that you can run and operate your own affiliate program using the Thrivecart system and shopping cart. And we will look at that in the next video. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in the next video. Welcome back. One of the ways you expand your audience and network when you are selling information products is to allow affiliates to promote those products using an affiliate program. You are now looking at the Teachable Affiliate Program. There are levels of the Teachable course platform that will allow you to run your own private affiliate program for the products and services that you create. Now, a less hands-off way of being able to manage your own affiliate program is to use a shopping cart system like Thrivecart. For all of the products that you sell on the Thrivecart platform, you can make those products available for affiliates to promote. And what you'll be doing is making it so that when an individual purchases a product from the link of an affiliate, you're going to see to it that the person is paid an affiliate sales commission. And so you can set these features up inside of Thrivecart for any product that you're going to create, you can also determine when the individual can expect to be paid from their sales activity. You can make it so that you approve individuals that are going to be signing up for your affiliate program, and you can determine how long their link will be active in terms of generating an affiliate commission. Now, if you don't want to purchase access to a shopping cart, you can use an affiliate platform and network like ClickBank where individuals come to look for products to promote to their audience. If you have in your audience business opportunity seekers, you will be able to use platforms like JVZoo and the Warrior Plus Network. These networks give you an online shopping cart as well as a transparent system for affiliates to be paid when they promote your product to their audience. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, depending on where you live in the world, there is a site called meetup.com that will allow you to gather individuals in your local area around specific topics and areas of interest. Now, as of the recording of this video, a regular meetup subscription is going to be approximately $15 a month for a specific number of members and organizers. And again, as of the recording of this video, a $19.99 subscription will allow you to have your account without limits. Meetup does have a pro subscription, which will allow you to integrate with other tools that you may be already using, such as your email marketing list. Regardless of whether you choose a pro or a regular subscription, what has changed from over the years is that Meetup now allows for hybrid events as well as virtual events. So while your group may be local in focus, you can still meet with that group in a virtual setting. Another site that allows you to create events and to make them available and searchable is to use the Eventbrite website. Now, once again, Eventbrite only works in certain parts of the world. And again, your events should be local in focus. However, you can place online events on Eventbrite. 
And one of the things that you'll notice about placing your events on Eventbrite is that individuals can follow your updates and your events to find out more about what you're doing in the future. And you can schedule your events into the future on the Eventbrite website. And in some cases, if you go to your favorite search engine, you're going to see the title of some of the events that are available if an individual is looking for it in a search engine. And you'll notice that there is no charge to enlist your events on Eventbrite. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. One of the ways to integrate your authorship with your business is to start a podcast. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to use Spotify's free podcasting platform, which is called Anchor.fm. Now, if you want to get started with podcasting and you want ease of use, Anchor can do that for you. Now, naturally, there are more sophisticated options available to you. However, the platform is intuitive enough for someone that doesn't have technical skills to get started podcasting and making their podcast available. Your podcast will then be available on the iTunes Network, Google Podcasts, and other podcast aggregators. Once you have a free Anchor account, what you'll need to do is to create an episode. You can record the episode from your web browser, or you can upload an audio recording to your Anchor account. If you have introductions and bumpers, you can keep them in a podcast library for use later. You can mix in introductory music to your podcast. Anchor will then make it easy for you to make your podcast available on Spotify as well as other platforms that aggregate podcasts. And as of the recording of this video, you can also upload a video file as your podcast content. And so Anchor.fm will give you your own podcast website if you need it, but you can also make your podcast available on your own website. And if you want to monetize your content, you can then set up in order to read ads from Anchor, as well to set up for subscriptions from individuals that want to continue to get your content. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. You may have to create graphical images and effects for your promotions. You can use one or two platforms that are free to access for that purpose. One is called Adobe Express. And if you go to your favorite search engine and you look for Adobe Express, you will be able to get access to the platform. Now, if you already have an Adobe account, some aspects of the platform will be considered premium and you'll have access to them. But if you don't have access to an Adobe account, you will still be able to use most of the features available in Adobe Express. And what you'll do is you'll pick the template for the graphics that you want to create. If you have to create an effect at a custom size, you can create one from this area. What Adobe Express allows you to do is to pick a specific template. And once you have the template, you can click inside of the template and you can begin editing the content to fit what it is that you are trying to do. And once you have completed the redesign, you can just go to the download area and you can download the graphic that you created in the format that you want it. You can undertake the same process in Canva.com. And once again, Canva has a pro account and Canva has a free account. And in many cases, whatever you are trying to accomplish, there is enough in the free account that will allow you to do it. You will choose a template. And then once you have made your edits, you can then download the content to your hard drive. Okay, so with that, thanks. And I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, one popular way of being able to keep your readers and customers engaged is to start an online group, typically on a social media site like Facebook, LinkedIn, or some other social media site. But increasingly, entrepreneurs are turning to private networks where you can charge a membership fee in order to allow your readers and customers to interact with each other. One such website is called Mighty Networks. Now, Mighty Networks, as the recording of this video, is a paid application that will give you a platform that will allow your customers to interact from their mobile device as well as their desktop computer. It will give you branding capability based on anything that you want to place inside of the platform. In some levels of the platform, you will be allowed to create online courses, charge for those courses, as well as interact through live stream technology. 
there is a similar platform called Circle.so. And Circle has all of the same features available at varying levels for the price you are willing to pay. Both platforms do require some technical knowledge, but not an extensive amount. If you are already paying for a course platform, one thing you can do is you can leave your comment area turned on for your customers to interact with you as well as each other. And this will typically happen around specific pieces of content inside of your course platform. And any course platform will allow you to set up a subscription payment option for your customers so that you can set up a membership for the interaction. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. In conclusion, one thing you can do is you can volunteer to be an expert to be interviewed on a blog or a podcast. And one of the ways you can find out about individuals looking for sources is to use a website called Help a Reporter. And if you go to your favorite search engine, if you type in the words Harrow, Help a Reporter Out, you will find out about Harrow. It's here where you can go through a process to become a source for potential journalists and podcasters. Once you register, you will get emails three times a day from individuals looking for sources to be interviewed on specific topics. If your area of expertise intersects with that topic, you can be an expert in those places. Now, depending on your area of expertise, you can also look to a similar site called PropNet, and PropNet is designed to connect journalists to expert sources. Now, PropNet is a membership, and you'll need to undertake the request for information process to become a source. Any recent blog posts written by the founder of a website called JustReachOut.io, it is suggested that you enter the following hashtags into Twitter, journal request, radio guest list, or PR request. And by using the hashtag, you will be able to find individuals looking to talk to experts about specific topic areas. So you will want to use all three hashtags in order to locate the right opportunities. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I'll see you either in another video or in another course.